Hello and welcome to this edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Today, we're gonna fucking take a look at the mid-90s awesome action movie. Great fucking piece of Steven Seagal's filmography. One of his last movies to make it to the theater, you know, before his career really went director video. We're talking about Under Siege 2. Under Siege 2, Colon, colon, Dark Territory is the sequel, obviously, to Under Siege. It's a golf signature film, man. Fuck, I love Under Siege. You can watch my review of it. Great movie, but, you know, it like it was like that time when they were trying to put Seagal into a big movie, so there was a lot of plot and other characters, so Seagal had minimal screen time. Under Siege 2 fixed that, man. They really, you know, at this point in time, Seagal is a big star. There's a whole movie. He probably had more say into it, so he gets to put all his bizarre shit into it. You know, his weird character traits, playing Casey right back again. There's, a, there's like a scene early on where he's trying to find his, his young niece in a train station played by a very young Katherine Heigl and he walks through the train station and for no reason, I mean at this point in the story there's no reason for him to be pissed but they just weird close-ups of his fucking face being pissed off like fucking, you know, mmm, fucking Steven Seagal anyway, he finds his niece to get on the train, they're gonna take a trip together and shit go to a funeral or some shit, I don't even know basically what happens is, just like Under Siege was die hard on a naval carrier this is die hard on a train and what happened is these, these terrorists take it over because they won't put up they want to be on a moving platform somewhere the the train obviously because they want to set up a satellite because it like little relay to a big satellite up in the sky that this evil scientist motherfucker you know created for the government shit so they go in and they hack it and they use this satellite it's basically like the star wars program in the 1980s if you motherfuckers old enough to remember that back in the day Ronald Reagan want to try to save us from some nuclear war bullshit he bullshitted us into thinking that we could put Satellites in the space that would shoot laser beams down and, and blow up nuclear missiles in mid-flight shit That we never had the technology for that shit. It was never gonna work But under siege takes that concept and kind of works into a fucking typical Seagal movie So anyway, this the bad guy played by Eric Bogosian his right-hand man Everett McGill Fucking if you remember he evil motherfucker played the werewolf silver bullet. He was also some weird cut cold at SMM motherfucker in the uh, Baple under the stairs where well, he's like the right hand man the, the, you know the main foe for Seagal he's going to do the the hand to hand knife fist fight whatever Seagal would do and, you know I don't know, kind of laughable choice for a menacing bad guy, but whatever. So, they're on the train, they're they're holding the government for ransom, we're gonna blow up the whole world, they blow up, I can't remember the fuck they blow up now, but they blow up some city, so maybe it's in China or somewhere, but it, you know, the show the motherfucker works, they ain't saying they're gonna start blowing up American cities, give us a billion dollars and all this shit. What's the guy gonna do? He's gonna let everybody on this train get killed, and let the spaceship shit fly around and blow everybody up? No, man. The spaceship shots are great, man. It's kind of a little bit before CGI, maybe they tweaked it a little bit, but you can tell it's just some little model toy shit flying out of space shooting laser beams and shit. It, it, it's fucking great, man. So it's a gold man. He's a little more front and center as the main character in this movie. Under Siege, he doesn't have a hot chick sidekick, unfortunately. Like, like I wish they would have wrote in the script where he married Erica Leniak so we could see her big fake tits again in this movie. But, you know, it wasn't to be. Instead, we, as a backup sidekick in this movie, we get Morris Chestnut from Boys in Hood. What, you know, he makes a lot of corny jokes about. Uh, you know, being, he's like a little, I don't know, waiter, bellboy, I don't know what the fuck you call him on a train and shit, a motherfucker takes your bags and shit and makes you a cup of coffee. But you know, he makes a lot of jokes about being the, the, the black bellboy who came up and was fighting motherfucker. He, like, there's a lot of scenes where he has a gun, he's psyching it up that he's gonna go shoot somebody, and then he runs in the fucking <laughs> train. He don't shoot nobody, he's a pussy, because his ass kicked the whole movie. But that's what we have Seagal for. Seagal, man, the great fucking scenes, a really violent, man, really snapping a lot of motherfuckers necks, snapping a lot of motherfuckers arms, fucking shooting motherfuckers, throwing motherfuckers on trains, you get to see lots of dummies fly off the train and shit. Great action movie, man. You know, going back to these old action movies, they're a little bit slower paced and shit than what we see now, but still, when the action does happen, fuck shit, it's hardcore. Bone crunching shit, I love the fuck out of it. Under Siege 2, fucking having a great outlandish plot. I didn't even talk about one of my favorite actors, you might know him from the movie Special Effects, as well as talk radio and shit, Eric Bogosian. This guy is an independent movie type guy. This guy does one man shows, not on Broadway, but in like more experimental theaters and shit. This guy's like a real writer, man. He wrote the play Suburbia that was turned into a movie Suburbia and shit. This guy is a great fucking, you know, and to get him being a scenery chewing, evil scientist motherfucker in this movie was a great coup. That's another thing that makes this movie, you know, really, you know, Memorable for an action movie, but especially for a Seagal movie. Plus, you got young Catherine Heigl with little perk titties before, you know, she really grew up to become as boring as she did in all those romantic comedies. Under Siege 2, man, just being memorable for not just a Seagal movie, but a mid-90s action movie. A lot of fucking fun, man. I loved it a lot. I gotta give it 9 out of 10.
Alright, Picture and Sound is being an older movie that obviously Warner Brothers does not give a fuck about. It's not going to look the best, man. I'll be honest with you. It ain't going to look like a brand new movie. They didn't do complete restoration. You can see little speckles and shit here and there, but it's not bad, man. It's just a little bit softer, like a little less clear, you know, than what you would see on a brand new movie. But way better than any DVD, way better than any TV airing you've seen of a shit. So, and plus you can get this for five bucks, so it's good. It kind of shit the bed on the audio. They just went lazy. They just took the DVD quality surround track. You know, they didn't upgrade it to True HD, DTS Manager. They just regular DVD audio. So, picture and sound, I do have to give a little bit of mixed back. But, like I said, it, it ain't too fucking, like, disappointing or whatever. So, picture and sound, sorry, I gotta go fucking six and a half out of ten. Extra features, this is usually where Warner Brothers really fucking <laughs> shits the bed, man. These old action movies, they usually just put the theatrical trailer call of the day. And that's pretty much what they did here. But I have to give them... Credit, they even, like, on the back, they even call it a Steven Seagal trailer gallery. Instead of just putting the Under Siege trailer, too, which they have, they put the trailer for all the Steven Seagal movies that they made. There's, like, eight, nine trailers. So, I gotta say, man, you just hit play all you watch on them Steven Seagal trailers, man. They're not the best picture quality, whatever, but that's besides the point. Just seeing the trailers for these old classic Seagal movies, man, a lot of fun. So, I want to give them more than I usually do for a trailer just because, you know, you can really fucking get nostalgic with the Seagal shit. So special features for all the trailers they did include. I'm going to give it 3 out of 10. That's it for the Under Siege 2 review. I hope you fucking like that. I know there's a lot of fucking Seagal fans out there that watch the DVD reviews. So fucking, you know, like I hope if you don't got this disc, get it, motherfuckers. What are you waiting for? It's available in many different places for $5. Ain't no excuse to not having this in your collection and shit. So get out there. Get it. Let's support the man, Steven Seagal. Let's write him fan letters. Tell him to quit doing that stupid militia training shit. Quit trying to be involved with Arizona cops. And just get back in the studio and fucking, you know, work hard. Do some good movies for us and shit. Steven Seagal, I still believe. But don't you dare turn out expendable stream, motherfucker. I won't see you on the screen with all them big action legends. Because you belong to be there even if you don't fucking believe in yourself, Steven Seagal.